right guys, so we're gonna finish some stuff up on the uh, front axle here. So uh, first thing, I want to change, wow, holy shit cam, steady that up a little bit. Okay, so the first thing I wanna change is, uh, this doesn't work as good as I had hoped. So there's some rotation here, and when that rotates up and down, it causes some bump steer, I guess, kinda technically. So uh, what I think I wanna do is nix this. I'm gonna cut one end of the, this back off. Or actually, I guess I'll cut both ends back out of here. And uh, I'm going to run from there out to straight above this. I'll have to use a long bolt so that steering uh, the drag link will go over the leaf spring. And then I am going to weld a stiffener off of here, a flat plate to the top, so it'll kind of double shear the bolt here so it's not, you know, under a bunch of stress. And then I'll weld a gusset plate in there. And, uh, I'm a little leery on welding the cast, but I know Jeep guys do it all the time to these outer knuckles, so I guess, you know, we'll try it and see what happens. And, you know, the this bolt will still be in here and there'll be a spacer, so it'll be tight, so if this does break, I won't completely lose steering. I should be able to feel it, control it, and stop the car before anything bad happens, so. Yeah, that's what we're gonna get after today. Well, let's get at it. All right, so I got this little guy cut out. That'll go just like that. I got to drill a hole on this end, but uh, the way I found that shape there, they got this handy dandy little thing from Harbor Freight. Uh, if you remember as a kid they had the toys like this, you'd stick your face into it, but uh, you just flatten her out, up to the surface you want to copy, and press it on there, and there you go. That's what I had to copy. Easy peasy. Yeah, now I'm going to get my hole figured out here, then I'll bolt it on there so I can get this end tacked up, and then we'll gusset it up. Alright, so I got my hole punched in there, and of course my bolt's not long enough. I'll have to go find some longer bolts, so I just got a clamp on there for right now. Bolt makes it to about here, you know, just shy. So anyway, got my hole punched in there, rounded the edge off real nice. Now I'm going to make a cardboard template. i put a gusset in here, and I'll tack it all up make the new tube and we'll cycle it through and see what it all does and if we have to we'll space this up a little bit and depending on how far up I have to space this I might make one more gusset plate that goes to the top of that so everything is supported but yeah we'll see all right there we have it uh, I don't think I'm gonna put that top deal on there it's not like we're rock bouncing with this thing so I think it'll be fine but uh, I had to space it up a little bit here so that when it, it turns all the way that way, this drops down a little bit. It clears that. Made a spacer for in here. Yeah, I got it all tacked up. Now there's a way that you have to weld this, or I guess you don't have to, but the best way is you need to preheat this, weld it, and then let it cool down as slow as possible so that the weld doesn't stress crack. Um, so yeah, that's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna get this all pulled apart, and then uh, you guys will probably like how we're doing this. So this is how I'm preheating it. I got it sitting up on some welding gloves so it doesn't heat sink into the table, keeps the heat into the part. Gonna let it do this for a little while. And then after I weld it, I've got the oven in the house over there preheating to 450 degrees. And I'm gonna chuck it in the oven real quick after I'm done welding it. And I'm just gonna, gonna let it uh, finish out bake cycle for like 20 minutes and then just gradually cool down and just leave it alone for a little while. So yeah, that's the plan. We'll see if it works. All right, there we go. I'm gonna let her bake in there for like 20 minutes and then let it just cool down on its own. We'll see what happens. All right, while well, I'm waiting for the axle casserole to bake in there, we're uh, working on the shocks. So uh, for the bottom, it's pretty simple. I just made these little tabs. These will weld onto the uh, axle like so. And then up on top, I just took a bolt and I shaved the head off at an angle so it kind of matched the angle of the frame. And I'm going to weld that on there and the shock will just slide onto there. And it'll come down and it'll mount onto here. And for shocks, I just got these uh, universal hot rod shocks off of Amazon. So, should be good enough. Alright, there we go. All welded and mounted in. Obviously, i got to get the right bolts for it, but for mock-up, it's what I had. I was up there. That light is not helping. Come on, fingers. 
Oh, whatever. Yeah, it's uh, just so that I can sneak that off without taking the filter off, and it's just so I can get the filter off without having to interfere with anything here. But yeah, I think that should work just fine. And then uh, front here, I've got flange lock nuts, so I don't have to worry about getting a washer on there because that, that was the size of bolt I had. So that's what we're running with. But yeah, now we're going to disassemble the whole thing, press the uh, ball joints out, take the um, hubs off the spindles, take it all apart, sandblast it, and then off the powder coat it goes. So yeah, I'll probably uh, see you guys when it's back to powder coat. Yeah, I figured I'd show you guys this. Uh, so this turned out all right, no cracks. Everything seems good, nothing fatigued or moved. Uh, used a piece of threaded rod and some nuts to make sure that this didn't warp in when I welded it. But uh, what I want to show you, you see how flaky and rusty and crappy this is? Well, that ain't gonna, powder coat won't stick to that. You know, paint won't, nothing will stick to that. So you gotta get it cleaned up. So after hours of needle scaling, uh, sandblasting with various different kinds of sandblasters and a wire wheel. This is the other side. All cleaned up. I'm going to spray it with a rust converter and uh, let that soak in, do its thing, wash it off, and then it'll be off to powder coat. Yeah, now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So I'm working on the axle tube now, cleaning these up, and uh, I may have gotten just a little carried away with this one. Well, that should powder coat well. One down, one to go. Just because we drive garbage doesn't mean we can't drive nice garbage. So I uh, forgot to film when I got the stuff because these guys showed up and distracted me. So uh, we got shit done instead. <laughs> but uh, there it is. All new shiny parts. All installated. Now I just got to get uh, wheel seals so I can put my outers on and get brakes and front end will be together. Well, I had the uh, rotors turned down and picked up wheel seals and repacked the bearings. I forgot to get caps. I got to get caps yet. But I was getting all excited because I was, you know, getting close to being able to uh, put the brakes and everything on. I got a brand new calipers and brake pads and... Uh, you know, I sandblasted and painted up my uh, caliper brackets back here. You know, I got them drying, getting all excited, and I'm like, all right, I can bolt these on now. But uh, I don't know where I went with the hardware. So I tore the shop apart looking for the hardware for these, and I found one with a socket still beat onto the end of it. And then it occurred to me that this has got them stupid E something or another they're called. I can't remember, but they suck. They're like an inverted Torx. So I had a socket beat on there to get them off, and I, was, I threw them away, and I was like, I'm going to get new bolts. Well, I have uh, neglected to get new bolts. So yeah, that's going to be it for tonight. Tomorrow, I'll try and track down some new bolts, and then we can get the front end put all the rest of the way together. All right, guys, front end is pretty much done. Got my brakes all installed, the hardware. Also, pro tip, these are from a... 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee because the ones for these have that stupid star shape on them and part stores for some reason don't carry them so 2001 Jeep Grand Cherokee they're the ex exact same length and stud size but they have a normal bolt head on so go with that but yeah got bolts in there got my brakes mounted brand new pads good turned rotors new ball joints brand new soft lines up here uh, soft lines I went with are for, they're from uh, Rough Country, I think. No, Skyjacker. They're uh, for a, the Jeep, same Jeep that these came out of, like a 84 to 89 Jeep with a 4-inch lift. That's what I got here. And that was enough to swing around decent, and it actually went right back into the factory line spot for the car. And also, my wheels showed up. I couldn't believe it. I, uh, I ordered these on Thursday. And uh, today's Saturday, and they were here. Ordered them off of Summit. I'm pretty impressed. Free shipping. I didn't two-day express or anything. And uh, yeah, showed up on the door today. So these are U.S. Wheel Smoothies, and they come with these. I'm not going to press it in there right now because they're a bitch to get back out. But yeah, get it to stay. 
yeah, you know, it's not going to stay. But I think that'll look pretty slick. I went with uh, five inch wide on the front. And I got to order the rears yet, but uh, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm uh, running a little low on funds, so yeah, got to order back wheels once payday rolls around because you know we uh, can't build this stuff on hopes and dreams all the time. That wraps up the front, except for I am going to put a different master cylinder on here because we don't have disc front brakes and it's got the stock one for four wheel drums yet. Um, I think what I'm going to try to use, because I've got an 06 Crown Vic sitting over there for parts, I think I'm going to try and use the master off of that. That one has four wheel discs, so I don't know how it's going to go with the rear drums, but uh, for the simple sake of, I already have it, I'm going to try and use it. So yeah, that'll be the next project. So I got the uh, old master cylinder off here, and I got the master cylinder off the Crown Vic. And uh, so I was planning on having to make like this super neat CNC adapter plate at work. But I uh, unbolted this, and I was looking at it. And uh, they're almost identical. There is a 60 thousandths of an inch difference between the spacing on these holes and these holes. And these holes are oversized enough that it does not matter. So I am literally going to be able to just bolt this on, make a new rod for here, and plumb it in. I really like it when stuff like that happens. You guys are not going to believe this. But not only does the master cylinder bolt on... But the prop rod, or the push rod, out of the uh, 55 master cylinder fits perfectly into the bore of the Crown Vic master cylinder. There's a little plastic bushing on the end. Perfect snap fit in there. And it's the perfect length. It lines back up where the other one did, so I just got to put the bolt in, and it's installed. That's crazy. All right, let me show you what I got going on here. So we got all the lines done, and uh, so I'm not real proud of this, probably going to change it eventually, but this is a, an adapter and a union to go from quarter inch to three sixteenths, because the master cylinder for the rears is quarter, and the car had three sixteenths, so uh, it'll work for now. And then this is the splitter from when it was four wheel drums, because everything was all off one line, so I came off the uh, what would have went to the back, and that comes up and back up to the firewall. And that goes to the pressure switch for the brake lights because on these old cars it uh, goes off brake pressure to excite the brake lights rather than a switch on the pedal. So yeah, now we're going to bleed them out and see if everything works. All right, we got the brakes all bled out. Now we can see if it stops the car. Go ahead and hit them. Look at that. So yeah, now that the uh, front end and the brakes are now all done, we can start moving on to making the lights all work. But I think we're going to call that a video for this time around. Thanks for watching.